Each morning the sun rises in the east, and at the end of each day it sets in the west. This observation, as well as the motions of what the Greeks called wandering stars, or what we now call planets, was observed for thousands of years. It was assumed that the sun and the planets revolve in a perfect circle around the fixed earth. That notion, that the entire universe revolved around us, fit well with the concept of man's supremacy and of our feeling of being exceptional. Religious, as well as academic text, taught this geocentric universe, and all the great thinkers, such as Aristotle, agreed. Ptolemy described the planetary motions in a 13-volume treatise called the Almagest, which was used for over a thousand years. Sometimes the motions of those wandering stars or planets appear to go backward or retrograde from its normal path. In order to explain these motions without jeopardizing the geocentric concept, the original model was adjusted to show that some planets had small circles within their normal orbit, called epicycles. So using the geocentric model, the planetary motions would look like this. Very few asked any questions and most just believed what they were taught with the accepted model. Because everyone could see the obvious motion of the sun, anyone who questioned the well-established geocentric theory was mocked or thought to be crazy. But some had questions, even if they didn't have all the answers. Those who questioned the fixed Earth got debunked by counter-arguments that they could not answer at the time. For example, if the Earth was spinning, why don't we get dizzy or just fly off, like water off a wet dog? Or from a technical perspective, why didn't they see any stellar parallax or relative change in the positions of the stars as we orbit the Sun? Yet even though the motions of the planets is a scientific question and not a political or religious question, those who persisted were charged by the authorities as being a denier, or waterboarded, or indefinitely detained under house arrest, or burned at the stake. So, does the sun go around the earth, or the earth go around the sun? How do you know? How do we know? The reason we know is because careful measurements found small anomalies and those little details did not fit using the established geocentric model. From the authorities perspective, those details were the devil and had to be ignored or suppressed because their dogma could not explain them. But most refused to look at any details or dare to think independently or kept silent out of fear. In 1992, about 350 years after they threatened to torture him, the Vatican acknowledged that maybe he was right after all. And based on a recent science poll, about a quarter of all Americans still believe the sun revolves around the earth. But at least some headway has been made over the centuries. And for the most part, that dogma can be put to rest. Those who questioned the dogma in their day were called heretics. Those who question 9-11, or other events today, are now called conspiracy theorists. When careful observations were made of planetary motion, the geocentric theory no longer made any sense. When careful observation is made of the tower's fall, the official gravitational collapse theory no longer makes any sense. Observations through telescopes revealed round moons orbiting Jupiter, so the notion of everything revolving around the Earth no longer made sense. Observations through microscopes revealed round spheres of iron, so the theory that only an office fire was involved in the tower's demolition no longer made sense. When one observes retrograde motion of the planets, it's not because of any special epicycle, but because of the differences in orbital speeds of the planets going around the Sun. When one observes the smooth downward motion of the towers, or the freefall of Building 7, it's not because of a natural collapse, but rather some type of intentional demolition. Although they may look similar, planets don't orbit in a perfect circle, but rather an ellipse. Although they may look similar, this is the result of a gravitational building collapse, this is the result of a skyscraper fire, and this is all that's left of skyscrapers that were blown up. 
When one carefully tests the red-gray chips found in the dust, one realizes that it's not primer paint, but rather a military incendiary known as nanothermite. Galileo's telescope didn't stop working when pointed from the earth to the sky, just because what he saw was contrary to religious doctrine. College physics doesn't become conspiracy physics just because we are studying how the buildings fell on 9-11. Carl Sagan understood the need to question authority so that we don't get bamboozled and abused like we have so many times in the past. If, if we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political, or religious who comes ambling along. Yet when questioned, the authorities involved claim total ignorance, even with the most obvious of details. Building 7, I often hear about. No plane hit Building 7. Why did Building 7 come down? What do you tell people? What is Building 7? Or when it was at Building 5, or the building that wasn't hit by the plane. Building 7. I have no idea. I've never heard that. <laughs> Sagan also understood how scientifically ignorant our leaders can be. Right. That's right. And if we don't understand it, and by we I mean the general public, if it's something that, oh, I'm not good at that, I don't know anything about it, then who is making all the decisions about science and technology that uh, are going to determine what kind of future our children live in? Just uh, some members of Congress? But there's no more than a handful of members of Congress with any background in science at all. And even our leaders are easily fooled believing the most nonsensical dogma as long as it fits with their personal belief system. Uh, Congressman, uh, the evidence that the World Trade Center Building 7 was brought down with explosives on 9-11 is real and proven. And more and more people are waking up to it every day. How much more trust to the American public does Congress have to lose before it faces reality and acknowledges the need for a new investigation into Building 7's destruction? Um, I don't think it needs any more investigation. I, I, don't, I don't think that... Uh, I think the way that those towers were brought down were by radical Islamic terrorists, and uh, that's the way it is, and I think every investigation has shown that so far. Did you read the 9-11 investigation no, by the committees? No, I did not. But you think it was adequate enough? Yeah, yeah, I think so. While 19 radical Islamist terrorists might have been in the planes, they could not have blown up the towers, no matter how much it agrees with his beliefs. But another 19 had the means and motives to take those towers down. In the investigations he didn't read, never explained the devilish details, including the downward motion of the towers, the source of the sulfur considered to be the deepest of mysteries, the fall of the spire, those spheres of iron, the free fall of seven, the nanothermite, and so much more. The study of evidence in motion of the planets is not heresy, it's science. The study of evidence and motion of how buildings fall is not conspiracy theory, it's science. The rush to judgment is inherent in all of us, based on the limited information we receive. If you don't understand the details of an event, you will fall for the official story explained by the authorities and their media. From their perspective, it's critical to keep the people confused and the details hidden, because those details are the devil to their dogma. But the people are waking up, realizing that their own government is behind some of the largest of crimes. And once those details are exposed, we can see that the emperor is wearing no clothes. So why would a government attack their own citizens? Well, one reason might be to get public support to attack those who got blamed. But to hide the details, they must either control or outright ban the media. See, the banning of YouTube was actually prompted by a video posted on the site that was allegedly leaked from top Turkish officials. In the discussion, head of Turkish intelligence, Hakan Fidan, says, quote, I'll send four men from Syria if that's what it takes. I'll make up a cause of war by ordering a missile attack on Turkey. We can also prepare an attack on Suleiman Shah's tomb if necessary. So basically, Turkey's intelligence chief is saying that he's going to make up a false pretext to militarily intervene in Syria by hiring four men to attack his own country. As the undersecretary of the Minister of Foreign Affairs explains, we're going to portray this as al-Qaeda. Wow. See, this bombshell leak describes something known as a false flag operation. 
A false flag is a covert military operation designed to appear as if it were carried out by other parties and is usually used as a pretext for military intervention with the citizens of the country unaware of their government's premeditated actions. But amazingly, anyone who simply acknowledges proven false flags throughout history is labeled a conspiracy theorist. Like yesterday's heretics, maybe someday all those who are exposing today's devilish details will be exonerated. And perhaps it's appropriate that Galileo's middle finger remains on display. Because the sun doesn't revolve around us, we revolve around the sun. And those buildings didn't naturally fall down, those buildings were intentionally blown up. How do we know the earth goes around the sun and those towers were intentionally blown up? The devils in the details.